to play High by Young Rising Suns. Super fun, easy song. We got a capo on fret 5, and we need the chords D, G, A, and B minor today. All the tabs are going to be up here during the video. If you click that link, it brings you to the end where I'm zoomed in, showing you how to play each one of those chords up close. Over here is our strum pattern. In the description, you'll find all of the chord progressions and anything else you might need to know to play this tune. You'll also find my social media links. You can click those in our sponsor for this month, ZMF Headphones. Click that link. Check out Zach's headphones. They are phenomenal. So we're going to start on the intro, and it's just the chord D for four measures. Just like that. And our main strum pattern for this tune is gonna be down strummed eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and. Put a little accent on the down beats, on those number beats. One and two and three and four and. And you should be all set for this strum. Just like that. So again, four measures of D, that's our intro. We're going to the verse now where we play again four more measures of D. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. After that, we go to G for two measures. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Back to D for two more measures. One, two, So that's going to be the first half of the verse. The second half of the verse works like this. We're going to play B minor for two measures. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Back to D for two more measures. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. We do that again. B minor for two. And then D for two. And then we're on to this little tiny section, which leads us from the verse into the chorus. And all that is is G. We're going to play G for a measure and a half. So four beats plus two. One, two, three, four, one, two. And that leads us into the chorus. So that little part of just G major for four beats plus two or a measure and a half. And then we're on to our chorus. So let's play all of the verse together so we can see how those two halves uh, work together. One, two, three, four. D for four measures. Goes to G for two measures. And then back to D for two. B minor. right there. So that G leads us into our chorus. And here we are. We're starting on D again. We're in the chorus section now. So here's how it works. We're playing D for four measures again. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Then going to B minor for two. One, two, three, G for one, two, three, four. A for one, two, three, four. Like that. So D for four, B minor for two, G for A, G for one, A for one. And that's going to be our chorus. Let's play it all together. One, two, three, four. that eight measure group is going to be our chorus. Okay, cool. So after we do the first chorus, we're on to the second verse. And the second verse is going to work almost the same way as the first verse. But we're going to play that G transition a bit earlier. So the way that the verse usually works, or the first verse worked, is that we played D, 
for four, G for two, D for two, that's the first half. And then we played uh, B minor for two, D for two, B minor for two, D for two, and then we did that G thing to get us into the chorus. Now the way that this one's gonna work is we're just gonna take off the very last D chord. So the very last two measures, just take that off and move our G back to uh, where that was. So we're gonna just shift the G back so the, the second half of the verse for verse two goes like this, B minor for two, D for two, B minor for two, and then G for a measure and a half. Let's play the second verse so you can hear how that goes. Here we go, one, two, from the top. D for four. See how we just took off that last D major chord on the second half of the verse and moved the G to where that was. And then we're on to the chorus after that. So it's just a tiny bit shorter and the way that it makes us feel is that the, the chorus just hits us a bit earlier than we expected and that's, that's good for songwriting. It's a, it's a good trick. A lot of choruses or a lot of um, songs work that way, bringing the chorus a bit earlier. Okay. Cool, we just finished the second verse. The second chorus is the exact same as the first chorus, our eight measure progression of D for four measures, B for two measures, G for one, A for one. So we're just playing that again. So after the second chorus, we're onto the bridge. And the bridge has a new chord progression, no new chords, just the new order that the chords go. So we're gonna start on B minor, play it for one measure, go to G, measure chords, B minor, G, D, A. B minor, G, D, A. Okay, do that again. B minor, G, D, A. And then you're gonna add another two measures of D before going into the chorus. So it's going to be a 10 measure group, B minor, G, D, A, and then again, B minor, G, D, A, and then two Ds on the end before getting into the chorus. And the chorus is still starts on D, so it's really important to make that apparent that that's the chorus. So kind of like accent, if you can, accent where it starts on the chorus. Okay. So, we're on the third chorus now, and the way that the third chorus is gonna work is that we're just playing a double chorus. So take your eight measure group, play it twice, and um, that's gonna be the last chorus. And after that, you're just gonna end on a D chord, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play from the bridge to the end of the song, so you can hear how all of that works. One, two, three, four, B minor. Should have played that B minor for two measures. One, two, three, two, two. And on a D chord. So that's going to be how the song works. So we got verse, well, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, double chorus, and on the D chord. 
So if you guys have any questions on how this song works, please send me a message, send me a comment, let me know what's up, and I'll answer you guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and you get one lesson every day, and that's pretty cool, I think. It's a lot of work for me, but it's totally awesome for you guys. And I, I really enjoy doing it. I learn a lot about music by doing this. So it's good for me and it's good for you guys. So, my name is Sean. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support you guys give me. I will see you tomorrow. Okay guys, we're checking out how to make the chords we need for this tune. We're gonna start with D. Now don't forget we have a capo on fret 5 that makes the capo 0 and then fret 1, fret 2, fret 3, fret 4. So, D works like this. We need first finger on fret 2 of the G string, second finger on fret 2 of the high E string, third finger on fret 3 of the B string. We're going to strum the A through high E strings. It should sound like that. If you put your thumb over the top, it mutes the low E string. That way you can really strum all six and only hear five. Okay, awesome. That's our D chord. A is going to be like this. First finger fret two of the G string. Second finger fret two of the D string. Third finger on fret two of the B string. There we go. Uh, open A, open high E. We want to hear just those five. Thumb over the top does the same thing that it did for the D chord. Mutes the low E string for us. That way we can strum all six. Okay, uh, G is gonna go like this. First finger fret two of the A string. Second finger fret three of the low E string. Third and fourth fingers on fret three of the B and high E strings. From all six should sound like this. Like that, that's a G chord. Now you can play it with three fingers if you want to by just taking your finger off the B string and holding just the high E string on fret three. So you have some options. Anyways, B minor is the last chord we need, our bar chord. Take your first finger bar across fret two from the A through high E strings, okay? Your third and fourth fingers have fret four on the D and G strings. Your second finger has fret two of the B string. So again, you're barring across all five and then adding these three. So that's how it should sound. Don't play the low E, just those five. You have your thumb on the back in the middle not over the top, not on the side, just right in the center. And then you can squeeze it just enough, but not too hard, so you can hear all five. Okay, D, A, G, and B minor are the chords you need for this tune. Click this link and it'll bring you back to the beginning. And we'll start right on the intro.